Hacking is extremely important in Cyberpunk 2077, and one of the biggest questions I get asked is, how do you hack in this game? Today, I'm going to break it down for you guys and tell you guys exactly how you can always get this 100% down without having to stress or scratch your head. Let's go ahead and talk about it. SFL, this is Lazybolt and welcome to today's video guys. Today is going to be a video and a guide showing you guys how to hack on this game. Hacking on this game is actually something that a lot of you might be scratching your head when you're actually doing it. Some of you might, might be puzzled and be like, what the heck am I doing? How come sometimes I do it right? How come sometimes I do it wrong? I'm going to tell you one thing. Hopefully, after you watch this video, I can almost guarantee 99.9 .9 of you guys, because you know there are cats and dogs who watch my videos, uh, that are going to be able to do this without a flaw, easily, peasily, without having to scratch your head or break your head and figure it out. Once you finish watching this video, you're going to have complete understanding on how hacking works and get a better understanding so you could be successful every single time. I'm going to break down every single component of the hacking and what you could do and anticipate your very move to make sure that move is 100% correct. If you guys are finding these videos helpful and informative, do me a huge favor, guys. Drop a comment, drop a like, share them with your friend. It does help us out a lot. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel, turn on all those notifications so you guys won't miss when our videos go live. So let's talk about hacking let's pull up a hacking menu here of a hack that i did prior to this and we're going to break each individual column one by one so let's start off with the first one which is called a buffer now the buffer is going to be located on the top of the right hand side right next to breach time remaining this particular buffer is going to be very crucial for you to understand how many moves you have in your ability to be able to hack the code matrix now as you guys notice right here my buffer has four empty squares that means that it's giving me four moves to be able to perform when i actually hack this codex as you guys see here this codex it has three different sets of sequences it has data mine one data mine two and data mine three now theoretically speaking depending on how many moves i'm able to have so depending on how many how much buffer I have is going to be determined on if I could do data mine one, if I could do data mine two, and if I could do data mine three. So, depending on how much buffer I have, is going to de determine if I'm able to actually do all these three in one complete CODIS matrix hack. Now, that's actually very crucial. I'm going to tell you guys how you're going to be able to identify if you're able to do one, if one or multiple ones in one complete sequence. So, this particular buffer though. One thing I do want to let you guys know, there is a way to actually increase this from four moves to seven moves. And I'm going to show you the location of where you're going to be able to pick up a better buffer that's going to allow you to do seven moves instead of just the four that you have here. The majority of you guys here will probably have four or six, depending on what you have equipped in your inventory. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But as of right now, we're going to be using this as a reference that we have four. So we have four moves. So whenever you guys go into the hack, the first thing you want to see is how many moves you have. That's going to be number one. Priority number two is the thing that's right next to the buffer, which is called breach time remaining. The moment you execute a press in the code matrix, which is where the, you know, where the codes are at, it's going to start the breach time. That means how much time you have to actually crack that code. Now, theoretically speaking, by the time you get started, you should already be analyzing every single move you could probably make in this code matrix right what you want to do before you press anything you want to make sure you see how many moves you have we have four you want to see how many breach time we have we have 30 seconds and now we want to see what moves we could possibly make so if we look at the sequence request to upload it's going to give us three different options as you hear we have data version one data version two data version three so we want to see which one we want to prioritize. I mean, theoretically speaking, you want to be able to get all three, but based on my buffer, I'm only able to do one sequence of these. So I have to see the one that is going to benefit me the most. In this particular case, I am going to go with the last one. But how do I know if I could do more than one if my buffer size is higher? So let's take a look at the sequence, of course. So we have E9-7A-1C. So if you guys notice, the main thing you have to look here, what whichever one you're doing, me personally, I'm going to be doing the bottom one, which is BD7AE9. Uh, so if I'm doing this one, the first thing I want to look at is the top row. 
the top row is gonna have should have one of these letters or one of these sequences either a bd 7a or e9 now every time that you press this it's gonna chat it's gonna change the position of the line so for example when you when you start off the line is going to be running horizontally when you press it the line will go ahead and drop down vertically if you press again the line will go ahead and go horizontal if you press it again the line will go up vertical until you run out of sequences okay so that's the best way i can explain it every time you press the line will change from vertical to horizontal to vertical to horizontal to vertical to horizontal now this is very important because right now it's not going to be so important because I only have to do three, uh, you know, three presses. But it becomes extremely important when you're trying to do multiple sequence, uh, sequence uh, two. Then I would have to continue that. But one thing you want to know is that regardless of wherever you start, whatever one you press first will cancel the remaining data mine. So, for example, if I press BD here and the first one, which is data mine V1, the first one is e9 so as, as soon as i press bd it's going to automatically cancel sequence one and sequence two because that is not the corresponding one for those particular ones that's not the starting point so if theoretically speaking i had enough buffers here and i wanted to do the sequence correctly how would i go about doing that well first i would definitely have to start with e9 e9 would have to be my first initial press and then from that e9 I would have to look for something that goes to 7a so i have to see where that drops so i would go right here 7a then from then it's going to change to vertical again i would have to go to 1c then from 1c it would change horizontal again uh it would change vertically again and then go to 55 and then from 55 i would have to continue to see if i could find bd 7a and e9 but the way you're actually able to determine if you're able to do multiple sequences you want to look at the first starting one which in this case would be e9 the data mine v1 and the one in the bottom should end in e9 that that's going to be crucial for you you want to do the crisscross pattern that's going to be extremely important because you want to make sure that the one that's in the first column coincides with the last sequence you also want to make sure that the last one in the column which in this case would be 1C coincides with the bottom one, which in this case is 55. But if it was 1C, it would be ideal because that would eliminate a press. So what that means is if I were to go E9, 7A, 1C, and the bottom one was 1C, that means I wouldn't have to you know press that again because it's already getting triggered. I would have to then continue to 1C, 55. So I hope that makes sense. So if I were to complete uh, sequence one and sequence two, instead of it being one two three four five six moves it's not six moves it's only five moves that i would need to do here which is e9 seven four one c if 55 was one c and then i would go one c one c so it only gives me one move because it would eliminate that move so the best way to do it whenever you see this you want to look at the sequence requirement and see if any if they crisscross if they don't crisscross then i'm gonna give you guys a very easy way to actually reset this which is super easy all you do is exit out and within 10 seconds you go back in and it'll give you a brand new sequence which will kind of let you trigger the correct sequence you want to keep and that pretty much breaks down how hacking works in the game well one thing i did want to mention guys is the buffer right so we want to make sure that our buffer is actually correct and we don't have to um you know in any case scenario don't have to limit ourselves to only four buffers right so all right so now it's talking about the buffer we're, we're gonna go ahead and go pick one up i'm gonna show you the map where you can get a really really good one and that's going to be at this ripper dock right here we're going to head over to this location we can actually probably try to fast travel i think that's going to be our best bet right here fast travel here and then um we'll fast travel to that location which should give us a better assessment here Let's see where can we fast travel here in this map we're going to go to let's fast travel to this one we should be good we should put us right in front so. watch out set our destination fast travel over here and then we should be good so this particular ripper dock he's going to be able to sell you guys a better buffer and you definitely want to pick this one early because it's going to give you a better possibility of being able to uh, get multiple attempts at uh you know at cracking certain uh, data breaches which is really really effective so let's see where's this ripper dock at 
let's head on right here back again. I don't think we got to really block that much, so we're just going to take a little stroll right here. We're like seven meters out, so we should be good here. He's going to be like in, a, like in a... In the streets like in a little booth right here so chat with him real quick yeah what a, what a, so looks like we found the right, last so here we go so, city. So, find him right here and he's gonna be located at this area here i'm gonna actually show you guys exactly where it's at okay so you guys could be like know where to go so this location right here okay right? so move this out right here and boom so we're gonna talk she to him to cut it out. all right so once you guys locate him we're gonna go in here and you're gonna go to where it says operating system under operating system this is where you're gonna be able to select and switch how many uh you know how many buffer sites you have for example right now i don't have a buffer installed that's why i only had four but theoretically you should kind of have this one already which is it's gonna give you a base ram uh of four buffer sizes this is the default one but you are able to buy from him more ones. So, for example, if I go to this one right here, you're going to see right here that says base RAM 6. It gives me seven buffer sites, right? So, it gives me an option to have seven tries within the hacking possibility, which is really, really cool. Now, in addition to that, he does have one, this one, which is, gives you a total of eight buffer slots, which is extremely OP. And it's a legendary one. Now, I do believe you have to be higher level than uh, higher level to actually get this one, and you're still able to apply mods to this, which makes it even better. But if you wanted to hack and be very proficient when it comes to hacking, you want to make sure you pick this one up. This one has a total of eight. But if you, you're kind of starting off the game, you have to pick this one, this blue rare, rare rare one, which is six buffer sizes. This is seven buffer sizes, and this is four. So theoretically speaking, you could pick anybody up. So I don't have one equipped right now because I'm using the slowdown time second. But if I wanted to equip that, now that I go hack, it's going to give me eight buffer sizes as opposed to only having four, which I had before, which is, makes it really, really good. So let's go ahead and make sure we uh, we pick that up. Now, I wish I could buy this one, but I can't because I have to be level 18 on my body. But I'm working on a build, so we're not going to be able to do that. But regardless of that, guys... That is how you guys are able to increase that buffer size to be able to hack multiple entries at the same time. If you want to hack all three of them, I think it is a very good starting point. But once again, remember the rule of thumb. You want to make sure you know your buffer time. You want to make sure you know how many buffer slots you have. You want to make sure you study the sequence. If the sequence align, do the crisscross method. If they do align it, then you guys should be able to hack every single one of them without a problem. If after watching this video, if you still have a question, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to answer for you guys though. But thank you once again guys for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos as we're taking a lot of time into putting them together. And in your cyber deck, you're going to be able to see here your buffer size once you have it equipped. As you saw, when I first showed you guys, I didn't have no cyber deck because I did not have it equipped. But now I do. So that should give you a better understanding of how it works. And these are different mods you're able to apply to this. So this is going to allow you to hack not only computers, but also enemies. So you're able to apply all of these and I'm able to apply all these mod slots in them. So definitely really OP. I do hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to keep it locked here for more content. And I'll talk to you guys later.